news tonight after a man was gunned down in the light of day. The situation only got worse from there. Right now, Atlanta police need your help finding five people. You see them there on your screen. The shooter, a man who sat nearby as the man was killed, and three others who came up on the man's body and seemed to have stolen from them as he lay there on the ground. All of this happening on Cleveland Avenue in Atlanta. And then right now, Jennifer, I'm going to walk our viewers through the video Atlanta police just released hours ago. It may be disturbing for some viewers, but it can hopefully help find the killer. This is 51 year old Anthony Frazier, a security guard. He has no idea he has just 15 seconds left in the land of the living. He's an unfortunate target. It happened Monday in broad daylight at 387 Cleveland Avenue Southwest, just blocks from I-75. Watch closely as Frazier steps out of his SUV. There's a guy behind him in a black long sleeve t-shirt, ball cap, and camouflage backpack. Police say without hesitation, Frazier is shot in the head. After gunning him down, the suspect appears to rifle through the victim's belongings. Investigators say this heartless criminal seems unfazed by who may be watching and continues to possibly take whatever he can. Do you recognize this guy? As he walks away, notice the witness who saw it all go down sitting on the curb. He didn't run as the unknown shooter walks by. He appears to acknowledge him. The witness sits there even after the suspect appears to drop a handgun. Then that witness walks by the victim, shaking his head. Before you know it, three more people show up, and one appears to possibly search Frazier too. Police want that cold-hearted killer off the street and want to talk to these potential witnesses as well. And right now, Crime Stoppers is offering a $2,000 reward for any information leading to an arrest. I don't know what's worse, him being shot in the back of the head without knowing, or the savages running through his pockets, robbing him while he stretched out cold. Before I go any further, I want to say rest in peace to 51-year-old Anthony Frazier. And my condolences to his friends and family. Now, I don't know what type of person Mr. Frazier was. All I know is his job description. He was a security officer. He was walking behind somewhere. I don't know if that's the place he was patrolling or what he was actually doing because it looks like he was in the cut. It doesn't look like that was out in the open. So now you have to question, why was he at that location? Was he working? Was he on his way to work? Because there's not a lot of details about what happened. Even detectives are going off of the surveillance camera. But Anthony Frazier, 51 years old, gets out of his vehicle with a cigarette in his mouth, not knowing he's taking his last breaths, not knowing a savage is walking up behind him casually, casually and take this 51 year old man out. More than likely he's a father, maybe even a grandfather. He may be a husband. Again, all the details have yet to come out. But not only did he get shot in the back of the head, he also got robbed by the savage who killed him. He also got robbed. He also got his pockets ran. Pockets ran 
by three other people. Two men, one woman. I don't know how you walk up on a man with a bullet hole in the back of his head and rob him. The average person is scared to go anywhere near a dead body, let alone gunshots. But these four savages have no problem doing so. And this is what I mean by people idling like a car, nothing to do all day, sitting around. You have too many people just sitting around. How hard is it for you to go and get you some employment? Why do you need to rob people? Why do you need to rob the deceased? You have to be a special type of person to rob a dead man, to walk up on a dead man and run his pockets. You have to be a special, a very, very special type of person. This also showcases what I've been saying about black people. Black people don't really care about black people. Facts. How do you have the heart to pull something off so evil? This is just evil, demonic, crackhead, shermhead, evil shermhead activity. Then you got the baby boomer sitting there, watched the entire thing. Even acknowledges him like salute young killer. Salute to you, young killer. He drops his gun, the savage, the young savage drops his gun, picks it up and just casually walks off. And my question is, why do we have so many of these savages walking the streets in liberal cities? Why is the judicial system releasing all of these savages? Now, there's a possibility because you have to leave this possibility open that he was not liked in the area he worked in, maybe in his neighborhood, but Maybe he was not liked. So people didn't mind seeing that happen to him. Maybe. But the fact all of you robbed him. They had no problem robbing that man. Was he that bad? Was he that bad? That he had to be murdered and robbed. I do believe there's more to the story. I do not believe that he just walked up behind him randomly and did what he did. Or maybe they had a beef. Again, it still doesn't give him the right to do that. Now the problem is. We have a no snitching clause in the hood. You can't snitch. A total of five people. You know the savage ain't going to snitch on himself nor turn himself in. But the other four robbers 
they're not going to turn themselves in or tell on who who's the killer because obviously they don't have a problem with it. Like, how do you not have a problem with this? You have to be heartless. Maybe they have seen so much death, killing, robbing. They're numb. There's people in different parts of the globe. Suffering does not affect them. It is a, it's a way of life. Heartache does not affect them. Seeing someone get shot, gunned down does not affect them. It just doesn't. They're numb to it. My question to black people. What do you do with people like this in your race? Do you lock them up? Throw away the key? Do you just leave them on the streets? Do you get them help? What do you do with this part of your race? Which is a pretty big size. I mean, the crime in these black communities is off the chain. Off the Richter scale. And if you have an answer for what you would do for or to this segment of the black race, then why don't black people do it? That's my question. Because if those savages were not hanging out, 51-year-old Anthony Frazier would still be alive today. Again, go through your downtown areas. Go through your outskirts. You will see tons of black men and women of older age hanging out, doing nothing, chilling, drinking, talking about the Atlanta Hawks, talking about the L.A. Lakers, talking about the Houston Rockets, talking about the New York Knicks, talking about the Chicago Bulls, talking about the Miami Heat. Just hanging out, nothing to do, seeing so much crime, they're numb to it. They don't care. Someone gets shot in the head, they just turn and look the other way. Oh Well, another dead man. Dude didn't even flinch. He's sitting there watching the entire thing. And he doesn't even flinch. They're numb to it. This is bad. That lets you know how bad it is in certain parts of black America. If I was there, if I would have walked up on him, first I would have called and got him help. They just left him there like he was nobody. Oh, well. Just left him there. And got what they could get out of him. But they walk up on this man like, okay. And. And that's a major, major problem. And if you ask me, these type of people should be taken off the streets. Now, El Salvador arrested 12,000 gang members. That's what I call a gang sweep. Now, there's gang sweeps here in America, but on a much, much lesser degree. A, a gang sweep in L.A. is like maybe 
30. 30, seriously. Maybe 100, maybe 200 every 10 years. But if that happened here in America, 12,000 gang members, 12,000 criminals were arrested in a nationwide sweep. I would not have a problem with it. Now, of course, it would cause outcry because people are going to have a problem with it. But I would not mind seeing that happen. Trust me, crime will be cut down a lot. But the problem is room. There's not enough room in these prisons. That's the problem. But then again, maybe America like these types of people on the streets because they keep them on the streets. I'm sure every one of those savages were arrested before. And guess what? They're back out on the streets. I honestly believe there was a sense of joy in that old timer's heart watching that. We spend a lot of time talking about age groups, gender, because there's a discussion about the baby booms. There's also a discussion about young black men. And when you look at this video, both age groups are dysfunctional. Both age groups are dysfunctional. The young savage walks up behind the older Anthony Frazier and kills him. The old timer watches the young savage, the old savage, excuse me, the old savage watches the young savage. Take out a 51 year old man. He's considered, well, he's not a senior yet, but he's almost a senior. He's not too far from being a senior. I think two or three more years. So this video clip shows you that both age groups are dysfunctional. Not all, we already know, of course, but both age groups are dysfunctional. Then there's talks about the different genders. Black men do this, black women do that. But when we look at this clip, black men and a black woman robbed a dead man, a deceased man, dead on the spot. Not moving at all, he's done. It's a wrap. Not only black men, but a black woman. Both genders are, in fact, dysfunctional. Black people are dysfunctional. So hopefully, Anthony Frazier family gets some closure. Something is telling me they will not be able to find this savage. For some odd reason, I believe they will not be able to find him, nor the four other savages. Atlanta is another liberal city with unlimited nut jobs roaming around. So I'll be wrapping up here. I'll keep a close eye on this case. Hopefully they capture him. Get him off the streets. This clip is disturbing. 
Very, very disturbing. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.